was first diagnosed with depression mid matric year. Um, I didn't really take it seriously when it was happening because I was such a, well, I still am such a go-getter, someone who's constantly on the ball. I was, I don't know, I was just an overachiever, deputy head girl on the Society of Everything. I always had this um, bubbly approach and it was, it was weird. It was suddenly, suddenly I wasn't myself. I was, I went from being this, I don't know, this extroverted, happy person, constantly happy. It was actually kind of infectious happiness um, to being this person who was apathetic. I felt overwhelmed completely. And that's when I went to a doctor and he said, it sounds like you have depression. He, he referred me to a psychiatrist and they suggested pulls. So it was pulls. Well, I decided not to take them because I thought, okay, it's fine. I can do this by myself. Um, and so I didn't. And then I, I left it aside. I ignored it. I didn't see it as an outright problem. And then I came to university uh, first year. And suddenly because there wasn't that constant support system that I had when I was in high school, I felt it more intensely. I felt, I felt alone. And it was especially this feeling of being alone because, I don't know, you have to come to university and you have to be friendly to everyone and happy all the time so that you can make those initial friends, those friends that will help you eventually get through hard times when you're feeling these hard times. And in second year, um, it got really bad. I made an attempt on my life to take my life. And I just remember, uh, just feeling alone and feeling like a burden to everyone around me. And my, my thinking behind taking my life was, then I don't have to be this burden, because... It's not nice. Um, being in this space where you feel like... Like people around you are tired of your company because you're not that same constantly happy, constantly energetic person. Because there's something plaguing your mind, there's something on your mind and it's just troubling you. And I think I really just wanted that release and that oh, it's over, I'll be fine. Eventually, at the end of second year, my boyfriend at the time referred me to the counselling centre here at Rhodes. At the time, there were protests at Rhodes, so, and because there were a lot of people that were being triggered by the protests, um, I remember the counsellor sent me an email one time saying, sorry, we can't continue your long-term um, sessions because there are people who need more immediate help. And I understood that yes, I mean, the, the counselling centre doesn't have lots of resources, but that made me kind of stop going. I, I didn't attend another session because I was like, okay, oh well. When I was in res um, in first year and I, I was feeling depressed, I think I was one of the lucky people that I was especially close to one of my subordinates. So I think I was lucky in that she noticed when I wasn't leaving my room or when I was isolating myself and she would come personally and be like, hey, 
what's up if you if you kind of feel that someone you know is depressed or is going through a time of depression the best thing you can do for them is be there when I'm at my worst the thing I need most and I tell everyone I want to be alone I tell everyone leave me alone give me my space but what I'm really saying is help me be here because that can make the world of a difference I think depression feeds on isolation and people when they're alone and when their thoughts consume them that's when they're at risk the most so I think just having someone there that can be like okay let's just talk about anything about anything listen to music do anything it helps pull you out of that very 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 negative space and I think just being there is is the most important thing that as a friend as a subby or anyone can do.